What's going on everybody? Kleep is Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm gonna be giving you some tips and tricks for the Krega Ovation 3 to help you make the most of the camera. Now before we go any further, as always, I do wanna remind you to hit that subscribe button. And in case you wanna learn more about this phone, I will be linking to several other videos about it in the description, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, Let's get into it. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is a feature called Touch Shot. Now essentially, this feature is gonna allow you to take a picture by touching anywhere on your screen. This is really useful for stuff like selfies, for example, where reaching the shutter button itself might be a little uncomfortable. So let's open the camera app. And now to activate this feature, what you're gonna do is hit the dots right here. As you can see, Touch Shot is right here. Tap on the icon. And now if you go back to the camera, you can take a picture by touching anywhere on the screen. Now I'm going to show you a quicker way to access the camera. Now of course, opening the camera app is easy enough, but if you're doing something else on your phone, like maybe you're browsing the web for example, and you want to capture something quickly in the moment, there is a faster way to do it. So no matter what you're doing on your phone, to open your camera, all you have to do is double press your power key like this, and it's going to open right up. So we're going to try that one more time, this time on an app. And there we go. And one final time when the display is locked. And there we go. So definitely a nice shortcut to have. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to use the ultra wide camera. This is definitely a nice feature to have to help you get those wider angles. And for a phone in this price range, it's really not something all of them have. So using the ultra wide camera is real simple. What you're going to do is hit this icon right here. And as you can see, now we got a wider angle. You can also zoom slightly in or a little bit more out. And then to go back to normal, tap on the icon one more time. And as you can see, we're back to the default setting. Now I'm gonna show you how to take a motion photo. This is something you're gonna use when you're taking a picture of something that's moving, and it's basically gonna help you get the picture in a way where it doesn't look like a giant blur. So to get to this feature, it's gonna be down here on this bar. So go all the way to the right like this. Go to more. And as you can see, motion photo is right here. So with this feature on, when you take a picture of a moving object, it's gonna turn out a lot better. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to use the grid. So from the main photo mode, go to the dots, and framing lines is right here, tap on the icon, and now if we go back to the camera, as you can see, the grid is now on, and it's a lot easier to center something or line up a photo in general. Now I'm gonna show you how to change your aspect ratio. By default, this phone, and pretty much any smartphone for that matter, is gonna have the camera in the four by three aspect ratio, but we do have a couple other options. So to change your aspect ratio, go up here to where it says four by three, tap here. And as you can see, you can choose between four by three, 16 by nine, one by one, or full, which in the case of this phone, is gonna be 20 and a half by nine. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to use the macro camera. Now this feature is gonna be down here in the bottom bar, and this time we're gonna to go to the left. So right here where it says super macro. So when you're in macro mode, you can get those close up detailed images, but be sure your camera is actually close enough to the subject, otherwise it's not gonna turn out right. Now I wanna go over some best practices in taking photos in lower lighting. Now technically, when you're in normal photo mode, if you're taking a picture at night, for example, or maybe just in a slightly darker setting, it will automatically adjust, and you're not really gonna to have to do anything. But that being said, keep in mind, when you're just using regular photo mode, and the lighting just really isn't that good, sure, on one hand, it is gonna adjust a bit, but typically, it's not really gonna turn out that great. Another option you have is using the flash. Now, if you're in a big open space, I personally wouldn't use this. Flash is really gonna be best for a darker area, but keep in mind, by default, the flash is gonna be on auto, and in my experience, no matter how dark your setting is, when you're in auto mode, it's basically the same as off, because it's barely ever gonna actually work. So if you are in a darker area, and you wanna use the flash, what you're gonna do is tap on this icon, and go to the on position. Now, whenever you take a picture, no matter what the lighting is, the flash is always gonna go off. Now you can also use the torch, which is basically gonna make it stay on. So if we hit this icon one more time, tap on this icon right here, and now as you can see, the light is gonna stay on pretty much as long as you have the camera open. Now all this being said, you can use flash if you want, but in my experience, with this phone at least, it's really not that useful. Even in the dark, things just end up looking really overexposed, and typically, it just doesn't really turn out very well. So the other option you have, and this is especially good for larger spaces, so for example, if you're taking a picture at night, but you're outside or something, what you can do is use night mode. So to get to night mode, it's gonna be in this bar to the right, so right here. And when you take a picture in night mode, it's gonna adjust for lower lighting, but it's gonna do it a lot better than normal photo mode. So in my experience, when you're taking a photo in lower lighting, when you use night mode, things are gonna turn out quite a bit better. But that being said, keep in mind, even night mode does have some limitations. And at the end of the day, this is a really low end phone and you can only expect so much. But when you're taking a photo in lower lighting for the best results, I definitely do recommend using night mode. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to mute the shutter. Now you've probably noticed by now, whenever you take a picture with this phone, it is gonna make some pretty loud noises. So if I go like this, and even if you focus in on something, it is gonna make a pretty loud sound. 
And if you're really taking a lot of pictures, this can get old pretty fast. So to get rid of these sounds, go to the dots up here. And as you can see, shutter sound is going to be on by default. But if you tap on this icon and we go back to the camera, it's no longer going to make a sound. And finally, the last thing I'm going to show you is yet another way to take a picture. And this one is real simple. No matter what mode you're in, whether you're taking normal photos, portrait photos, or maybe you're recording videos, to activate the shutter, all you have to do is press either volume key. So volume up and volume down. But this concludes my camera tips and tricks video for the Cricut Ovation 3. Again, if you want to learn more about this phone, I will be linking to several other videos about it in the description, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kleepus Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.